Please be seated. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 27 through 30. Listen to the word of the Lord. You have heard that it was, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. This is the word of the Lord. Never thought you'd be talking about sex on a Sunday morning, did you? <laughs> Probably the new Revised Standard. What was there something different about it than you were expecting? Okay, okay. <laughs> Adultery, right? Do we, I think I see a lot of eyeballs, so I must have some attention stuff going on here. But uh, do you think it was by any chance that Jesus would talk about adultery? Because sex can be a touchy sub subject. But have you ever noticed that Jesus never shies away from touchy subjects? You know, we were created in a way that our sexually, sexuality is very powerful in us. The need to survive is shortly followed behind by the need to procreate. Sexual impulses come from deep within. And sex is a lot more than intimate parts of the body. But our hearts and our souls are tied up into it. And so if that involves our relationship with God and one another, this is important stuff. You know, it would have been a lot easier to just talk again on murder or stealing or idolatry. You know, I know some parents who are probably wishing I'd preach on, children, obey thy father and mother. <laughs> But, uh, all right, you young ones, you also got to remember in Ephesians, it says, parents, do not provoke your children to anger. <laughs> you know, those are all pretty safe topics. And we like talking about the sins that other people have. But, you know, most of us have um, not murdered anyone lately or committed adultery, but... Last week we found out that, you know, if we're angry with someone and call them a fool, we're in danger of the fires of hell. Someone regarding adultery said, you know, when I'm at the beach, I can look at the menu as long as I don't order. But Jesus says, I don't think so. Jesus starts by saying, you have heard that it was said. But he doesn't leave things the way they've always been said about a whole lot of things in life. In the preceding verses, last week we looked at, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said in ancient times, Thou shalt not murder. And anyone who murders shall be liable to judgment. And everyone's not in their heads, right? Yeah, those murderers, they get what they deserve. But Jesus goes on to say, But if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a sister or brother, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Wow. That's pretty rough. Because I think most of us have been to the second part. The, but I say unto you, and, and this week, Jesus does the same thing. He's saying these things back to back. He says, you have heard there was said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say to you, if anyone looks at a woman, parentheses, or man, 
with lust, they have already committed adultery with them in their heart. Well, as Joyce would say, now he's getting to meddling. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was honest about it, wasn't he? You got to respect that. God help him as he's in hospice care. But Jesus gets deep inside. He says, you know, it's, it's not just homicide and adultery, but anger and lust. You know, it's tempting to think that God's a lot more concerned about the things that we do than who we are. Think about the things that we, you know, easily call sin. Lying, cheating, stealing, idolatry. We all go, yeah, those are all sins. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, as we used to say. But Jesus goes a lot deeper than that. He says, don't get angry. Forgive. Seek the forgiveness of those who are mad at you. Jesus confirms that adultery is wrong. He doesn't shortchange that. He says, but Keep your heart and your mind and your life on the path that I have placed before you. Because there's very little difference between checking the menu and ordering. (laughs) A slight detour of the mind to what the eyes have beheld is indistinguishable from the act itself. Now, I last preached on this passage in 2014, and I don't know how I came, you know, I uh, saw this picture associated with it. I used a 3D modeling software, so that actually is a hole, and you could kind of move the camera around, and I was trying to get a picture of what, of this metaphor. You see the hole with the fire, with the hell burning down below, and we might think of sin as a pit, that we're not supposed to fall into. Because who would want to fall into that when Jesus says, anyone who's looked at a woman with lust in their eyes already committed adultery with her, guess what? He's not really widening the hole. You catching me on that? The hole isn't bigger. It's not a bigger target to hit when we screw up. He's saying something else. Jesus shows us that we shouldn't so spend so much time standing at the edge of the hole. And more than that, we should never have left the path to approach it in the first place. You know, we approach the edge of the pit means that we've already been listening to the lies of sin. We've already taken a couple footsteps to approach the edge of that big step of murder or adultery or many other things. But the big problem is is when we left the path. You know, Flip Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. (laughs) Man, I haven't heard that in a long time. But you know what? I don't need anyone. I can do it myself. (laughs) Are there any sins that in hindsight have seen worthwhile to you? I can't name any. And I've got a long list in my my life. Jesus said, you know what? I've come that you might have life. He says, I have come that you might have life abundant. Because not only does sin have eternal costs, but there's a price that we pay for it right here and right now. Unrepentant sin is kind of like a cancer that eats at us. You know, there's, you know, the saying about unforgiveness is like drinking poison, hoping the other person would die. That clinging to that sin (laughs) is affecting us more than it is that other person. Jesus died on this cross, not only for the eternal consequences of our sins, but so that we could be freed from them. That, That poison, we'd leave it behind that we can experience eternal life right now, today, not just after we breathe our life last. And this is the really amazing part. Jesus says, you know what? If you have to cut off your hand or pluck out your eye to avoid that sin, it's a good deal (laughs) to give up something that was that important. I remember as a summer volunteer at a camp, 
you know, I was in college and it's mainly, mainly high school students. And, you know, they had some time off in the afternoon and we're walking down to go to the pool in the afternoon. And this one guy goes, man, I'm going to pluck an eye out. <laughs> um, Jesus isn't messing around. He says, this is important because it will affect you. It will affect me. Adultery, like most sins, we'll pick on adultery as a model of this. You know, we got to walk down up that path for a little while before we get to the edge where we're about to fall in. As we walk along, something catches our eyes. But you can see there are signs that God has given us that how to stay on the path and where not to go. If we end up at that edge, that means we've already left where God has called for us to be, to do, to live, to experience himself, to love one another, to walk up to the edge of murder, walk up to the edge of adultery. We had long ago left where he called for us to be. You have heard that it was said, thou shalt not murder. I haven't murdered. I haven't committed adultery. I don't worship idols, we all tell ourselves. But Jesus says, watch out. The danger's already been done. We're angry with people. We begin to gossip about them. We allow our minds to roam even though our hands don't. We preserve material things more than the treasures in heaven. When we do so, we leave the path to life that God has placed before us, the path that Jesus opened on the cross, forgiveness and freedom from sin not only for our own, but the forgiveness we give to others, these things that are at the very core and depth of what we truly need. In these passages, Jesus is teaching about living the life for which we are created. I believe that God is as concerned about, don't cross that line, don't step into that pit, as he is, about the path that leads to life. A number of years ago, I, um, sorry, Rebecca Harris is in here. She was really, um, I remember her saying, wow, thank you for telling me that story. I'm going to be real brief here, though. I was preaching from Romans, and um, back when I was hang gliding in California, flying off of this mountain, you land down in a riverbed. Many of you have heard this story before, but it is just rings so true in my life and evidently in some others, that as I'm setting up to land, there's this large gravel area, and from the direction the wind is going and I'm going to need to land, there's a bush about this tall. And I'm just going, I just need to miss that bush. And it's all good. Now, with a hang glider, you can't kind of go farther. You know, you don't have a throttle. You can create a little drag, but you don't have a throttle. And while... Landing there, I unfortunately kept my eyes on the thing I needed to avoid. It's kind of like, I don't want to go there. Don't want to go there. Don't want to go there. And I still remember finding myself a little surprised with that bush right in front of me. And I couldn't quite stop before it, nor did I have enough airspeed to get over it. And I crashed and broke my arm because I kept my eye on what I wanted to avoid rather than looking at where I needed to go, focusing on the path to safety, focusing on the great landing spot that was all over the place. But because I focused on the one place I didn't want to be, guess where I ended up? Well, I I barely cleared it and then stalled and boom. It's about staying on the path, looking ahead, as the Apostle Paul puts it, keeping your eye on the prize, the upward call of Christ Jesus. When we keep our eye on the path to which Jesus calls us, these detours don't drag us over. And we don't find ourselves heading for the one bush in the landing area. 
because the cost of sin is greater than we might imagine. And the th- God doesn't just call things sin because he's trying to restrict us, but because they damage us. They damage our relationship with God, and they have real consequences, both here and now, as well as the offense to God's holiness. Sin gains a foothold in our lives, inch by inch. Sin separates us from the great God, amazing God who loves us. Sin separates us from each other. And sin, while it hangs on to it, to us, it's hard to really know the love, joy, peace, and hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. But as we've been talking about, the damage begins as we start wandering an inch or two off the path to which God has called us and start looking at that thing we need to avoid Rehearsing in our minds the reasons why we're angry at someone. That second look at that person who catches our eye. (laughs) But the good news is, Jesus loves us. God offers us a fresh start. That even while we find it hard to forgive each other, God is eager to forgive us. It was while we were sinners, not while we were perfect, that Christ died so we can live. So if we've wandered, God says, return. Like the father of the prodigal, wrapping his arms around us, hugging us, rejoicing, throwing a party because we've come back. If we sin, God will forgive. If we have been wounded, God can heal us. If part of us has died in all that we have gone through and done, God will heal us and resurrect us. As scripture reminds us, you know, if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and who is just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.